Hey guys, welcome to Ethio Electrical. In this video, we will be looking at how electricity works. Presently, this is fundamental information for any engineering, so we'll go over the fundamental components. Of what you want to be aware, every one of the materials we use are produced using particles. Simply put, the materials differ. Since the development of their iotas are marginally unique. Three particles make up the atoms, two of which are tracked down inside the core furthermore, the third molecule sits outside this. At the focal point of the atom, we have the core. Inside the core, we have the neutrons, which have no charge, and we additionally have the protons, which are decidedly charged. The neutrons and the protons are a lot heavier than the electrons so these will stay inside the core. Encompass the core are different layers of orbital shells. These are like flight paths for the electrons. The electrons flow along these flight ways just as our plant is orbited by a satellite, then again, actually the electrons travel at practically the speed of light. The electrons are adversely charged and the positive charge draws them in. Of the protons. The electrons circle around the core in these orbital shells and there are a set numbers of the number of electrons can be in any one orbital shell. The quantity of protons, neutrons, and electrons a molecule has lets us know which material it is. Particles clutch their electrons firmly, in any case, a few materials will hold on to them all the more firmly than others. The external most shell is known as the valence shell, furthermore, in this shell, a few materials have loosely bound electrons which can stream to different molecules. Iotas which can pass electrons are called guides what's more, most metals are conveyors. Atoms, on the other hand, without free electrons thus they can't pass electrons between different molecules are known as separators. Furthermore, these are things like glass and plastic. Presently, we can consolidate these materials to utilize power securely by having the guide in the middle, which enables the movement of electrons, be that as it may, encompass this with a separator to confine where they can stream to, i.e., not prompt us, which guards us. In the event that we look inside a cut of copper link at the free electrons surrounding the core of the copper molecule, you'll see that the free electrons can travel to other atoms, be that as it may, this happens randomly in any heading. In the event that we associate this slice of copper link to a power source in a closed circuit, such as a battery, the voltage will then push the electrons around to move, and then they'll all flow together. In a similar bearing to attempt to get back to the next terminal of the battery. At the point when I say circuit, this simply implies the route where electrons could travel between the two terminals, the positive and the negative, of a power source. So we can add things into their way, like lights, and this means that the electrons should pass through this to get to the next terminal. Thus we can utilize this to create things like light. The circuit can either be open or shut. In a shut circuit, that implies the electrons can stream around. Also, in an open circuit, this means that the electrons can't stream. Voltage is a pushing force of electrons inside a circuit. It resembles strain in a water pipe. The more strain you have, the more water can stream. The more voltage you have, the more electrons can stream. Yet, volts meaning could be a little more obvious. All things considered, a volt is a joule for each coulomb. What's more, a joule is a measurement of energy or work what's more, a coulomb is a group of streaming electrons. We'll examine what a coulomb is however, in a moment. Therefore, a 9 volt battery can supply 9 joules of work or heat producing energy each group of moving electrons from one battery side to the other. For this situation, the current of electrons stream from one side of the battery through the drove light, which creates light, and afterward the electrons flow to the opposite side of the battery, therefore 9 joules of light what's more, heat is delivered by the light. Current is the progression of electrons. At the point when a circuit is shut, it indicates that electrons are able to move, and when the circuit is open, no electrons will stream. The movement of electrons can be tracked. Very much like you can gauge the flow of water through a line. To quantify the progression of electrons, we utilize the unit of amp. One amp implies one coulomb each second additionally, a group of electrons is one coulomb. The gathering is incredibly large and is roughly six billion, million, billion electrons, furthermore, that needs to pass in one moment for it to rise to one amp. That is the reason electrons are assembled together and simply referred to as amps for the convenience of engineers. The restriction of electron flow is resistance. In a circuit, the electric current carrying wire will normally have some opposition. The more extended the wire, the greater the opposition. The resistance decreases with increasing wire thickness. Protection from the progression of electrons is different for every material. What's more, the temperature of the material can also modify electron flow resistance. Electrical circuits use specially planned parts known as resistors to purposely limit the stream of electrons. This is either to safeguard different parts from such a large number of electrons coursing through it or on the other hand it can likewise be used to make light and intensity, like in a glowing light. Opposition happens when electrons crash into iotas. The number of collisions varies from material to material. To another. 
copper has exceptionally low crash rate, yet, different materials like iron will have significantly more impacts. At the point when crashes occur the particles produce heat also, at a particular temperature, the material will then start to deliver light as well as intensity, which is how the brilliant lights work. At the point when a wire is enclosed by a loop, it will create an attractive field as the ongoing goes through it. The link will naturally create electromagnetic field without anyone else. It's simply increased by the curl. By enclosing it by a curl, the attractive field turns out to be serious areas of strength for so that the magnetic field actually begins to influence the electrons inside the wire. However, we'll take a gander at why this happens in a future, further developed video. We can make the magnetic field stronger. Essentially by wrapping the coils around an iron center. We can likewise build the number of turns inside the loops and furthermore we can increase the measure of current going through the circuit. And electromagnets function in this manner. Furthermore, it's additionally the base of how enlistment engines work. To learn more about acceptance engines, we've proactively covered Thys in another video as of now. Simply see the connection on the screen now. Furthermore, when an attractive field passes across the curl of wire, it will prompt a voltage in that wire brought about by a prompted electromotive power, which is pushing electrons in a specific bearing. In a circuit where the wire is connected, then a current will flow as a result of this electromotive force. This is the premise of how AC generators work furthermore, the power at your wall attachments inside your home is delivered in a very much like way. Transformer, we can now combine all aspects. Together that we've recently covered furthermore, when we do as such, we will see that we can utilize one curl to create power and afterward we can put two different loops in extremely closeness to each other yet not contacting, what's more, this will make a transformer. A voltage will be produced by the transformer. From the first of the essential loop over into the auxiliary curl. Also, this will compel electrons to stream in the event that the curl in the auxiliary side has a shut circuit. Presently why is the transformer significant is that we can increase or decline the voltage between the primary and the optional curls essentially by changing the amount of curls on one or the other side. Once more, this is a subject without anyone else therefore, we will cover this in a subsequent more in-depth video. Presently, Something different which I just need to make reference to momentarily is the capacitor. Thus, a capacitor forces positive and negative charges to divide between two plates at the point when it is associated with a power supply. This causes a form upper store of electrons inside an electric field. When the supply of power is cut off or disrupted, these charges will then be delivered, stream up, and meet once more. This gives a power source but just to a couple of moments until the energizers have paired back once more. It's marginally like a battery, however, capacitors are widely used. And almost every circuit board has them. Naturally, we will discuss this in greater detail. In a subsequent video. Simply know about these. So the last part one want to cover in this video is that there are two types of flow power. That being substituting current, or AC, then direct current, also known as DC. Rotating current basically implies that the current flows backwards and advances in a circuit as the terminals bear continually switched. This is a piece like the tide of the ocean. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out. As a result, there is constant reversing. Presently, exchanging current is the most well-known source of force and the plug sockets in your homes, in your structures, in schools, and workplaces, and whatnot, these will all be providing alternating current, AC. Presently, then again, we've got direct current, or DC, furthermore, that essentially means that the ongoing streams only in one particular direction. It isn't rotating. This given from batteries what's more, practically the entirety of your handheld gadgets are also derived from this. So we can switch AC over completely to DC as well as the other way around utilizing power gadgets. Also, this is the way we charge and power, you know, little gadgets, what's more, it's additionally the way that sunlight power chargers can be utilized to control our homes. Since sunlight based chargers produce DC power, what's more, our homes need AC power. So we need to convert this for it to be usable. So both AC and DC have pros and cons to it, yet, you know, without a doubt, we'll check this out in another later video. It's a smidgen further developed. What's more, there's additionally quitty and fascinating history behind why we use AC, DC, and the creators behind that. On the off chance that you have minutes I most certainly suggest having a Google or a YouTube of this, as well. Okay, that is all there is to it for this video. Many thanks for watching. I want to believe that you partook in this and it helped you. Assuming you have any inquiries, kindly leave me in the remarks segment underneath. Likewise remember to subscribe and like.